Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at Brave Browser. But not just taking a look at it and moving along, oh no, this is going to be my primary web browser. A replacement for Firefox. So I've been using Firefox for years now, I can't even remember when I started using it, but anyway, I had problems copying my profile over from KD Neon while I changed to Kubuntu, and yeah, it didn't work. So I've either got to recreate my profile, but since I'm sick of listening to Mozilla's opinions lately, I've just said good riddance to them. And I'm moving along to the more privacy-focused browser, Brave. So yes, Brave have included their own advert blocking and tracker blocking. Now this does sound very wonderful, but I'm not interested in it. And you'll soon see why as I set the browser up. But those elements are very interesting, but Brave can see that it's no use to just simply blocking all adverts. Nothing runs for free on the web, and that is why they have created their own alternative. With their basic attention token, or BAT, which is an ad exchange based on Ethereum. And there is Brave Rewards, which means you can give money to websites. From looking at adverts, but adverts that have been based on your activities from your system, not shared with other companies. So it does sound very promising, but I'm not going to be partaking in that at the moment. So this review is going to be based around what I can see with the rest of the browser. So as I mentioned, there is the tracking and advertising protection in Brave, and now I've chosen to disable it. So I have my own protection against tracking, which is sat on a DNS server. So this would be duplication, and you know, I'd rather entrust the DNS server to do the job rather than my computer looking through every element on the web page. But what I do differently is cookie blocking. I disable all cookies, first party and third party. Now, if you do want some element of privacy but don't want to go through all this, then I would just take the third party blocking, so only cross site blocking. Now, fingerprint blocking, I'm going to take strict, but when I was doing my testing, I barely saw this working. Now, it is more due to my other protections, like on the DNS server. So I accept this feature could exist and would do something without any other form of tracking blocking. There's quite a lot of features you can tweak here to prevent web pages from showing certain features. and That is really nice. Okay, this is really more advanced usage and obviously not for the average user, but yeah, this is what I was looking for in a web browser. Oh, something you can have here is a private window with Tor. Very nice, so I don't have to run any other operating systems or other browsers to get onto the dark web and Tor. And there is the safety check, so you can check your passwords from data breaches, but that feature is appearing in other web browsers. That's not unique. I'll send do not track. Well, you can always live and hope this feature works, but barely ever works these days, mostly gets ignored. So I kind of glanced through a lot of the settings, but the main one I'm kind of interested in is this shields up. So if I'm going to go across to something like YouTube. So I want to sign into YouTube, but how can I do that? I've just disabled cookies. So I think the question is, how convenient is it to enable cookies for certain websites? And actually it is really convenient. I just go across the top right hand side there with Brave Shields, and I go across to Cookies and Allow Cookies. So that's going to be our Google, that is going to have to be all cookies allowed because they're weird sign-in mechanism. Okay, well once I've signed in, I go back to the YouTube and Oops page, but that's fine because I still need to set up some more of the cookie preferences. Oh, this is a world of fun trying to get the internet working when you have cookies blocked. This rather harsh blocking does mess with some sites and at this point you just have to go shields down and eventually it works. So I've got something else like the daily fail, let's say. Yeah, daily fail, daily mail. Well, it recognises I was after daily mail on the suggestions, which is very nice. Well, I have to say, I do like these backgrounds as well. It, it does change around. Uh, but yeah, daily fail. Let's go across there. <laughs> Bearing in mind, I've got uh, all the blocking stuff enabled. So it still works, though, if cookies blocked. But I don't aim to log in here, so that's fine. Looking at cover your tracks, we can test the browser's protection against tracking and fingerprinting. So yeah, test my browser. Bearing in mind I'm using my own tracking protection at the moment, well, including with cookies blocked. 
So let's see how I do here. And then I'll enable the tracking protection. So, okay. So we have partial protection against tracking advertising and invisible tracking. I'm blocking third parties that do not honor, do not track, no. Uh, protecting fingerprinting, your browser has a randomized fingerprint. Browser fingerprint has been randomized among the 281,000 tests in the last 45 days. Although sophisticated adversaries may still be able to track you to some extent. Um, yep, yeah, fair enough. Uh, but go on. Let's uh, be more aggressive here, shall we? So moving to an aggressive form of tracking protection, it shows that well now have slightly better protection here. We've moved from partial to yes. <laughs> yeah, still not much different from where I was before. This was a little look at the Cover Your Tracks feature from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. These guys have done quite a bit with the protection from tracking, such as the Privacy Badger tool that you can add to the likes of Chrome and other browsers. Sorry, extension, not tool. One of the features in Brave is to automatically redirect to .onion sites when they're available. I've actually disabled that because it makes browsing a little bit quicker but it does seem to actually check if the option is there. So I've gone onto the brave.com about page and there's the option of opening in Tor. So yeah, I just click that and it goes across to the .onion website, which as you can see is a little bit slower, but yeah, it's a nice feature to have and it shows the Tor browser working. Ah yes, it is indeed working because that is not my IP address. So we have the Tor browser built into Brave, which you can use optionally for the private browsing, private browsing with Tor, but you also have the private browsing without Tor. So yeah, there's options, good to have options. We have all the various tracking protection, which as I said, I'm not necessarily interested in that, but because I'll be blocking cookies by default, I want a quick way of enabling cookies for certain websites. And I have that option here. Quite a nice look and feel for all this. There's another sort of ad blocking feature which I quite like to have, and that is the element blocking. Not necessarily for blocking adverts, but for blocking these things, cookie pop-ups. I don't care about cookie pop-ups. So you can right click on the element and select Brave, and go to block element via selector. So that's gone across the other window. Uh, is that it? Mm, didn't think that would be it. Ah, no, I didn't quite get it. That's not quite as good as the uBlock Origin, which I could have checked some of this stuff to start with. But anyway, the feature is there. It might just be here. So block element via CSS selector. Oh, maybe. Yes, that's it. Got it a second time. Whereas if I look at the equivalent feature in uBlock Origin, I've got a couple of options here. I've got an element zapper mode and an element picker mode. The element zapper mode will get rid of the element in a one-off view. So I can literally drag the cursor around on the screen and it highlights the elements for me. So I know I'm selecting the correct thing. And yet once I've tested it out with the element zapper mode, I can refresh, go back to the element picker, highlight it again. You know, I've got the options here, you can preview it. Yep, and actually create it. And that's it. That is far simpler than Brave has. But this is a specific extension, which actually is available for various web browsers. You can install extensions to it for the Chrome Web Store. So if I want to look at theming, uh, yeah, something like that. I just want to show it working. So add that to Brave. Yeah, and it's compatible with <laughs> like that. It says added to Chrome. Yeah, added to quote unquote Chrome. I know there's quite a bit more about Brave I could have discussed, but this seems to do everything I want it to do. And the interface is quite nice. It does seem to have a bit of a learning curve to it, but otherwise, yeah, I think I can work with this. So that was a look at Brave Web Browser. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. <laughs>